And now we are going to be moving into our final game of the day, which is going to be Ari versus Sykes. We have, it, this is going to be an explosive game. I mean, both Ari and Chris have been playing great. Chris seems like he's finally crawled back. He was, I mean, he had that rough loss to Agnes, who played fantastically against him. But now he's reaching back up. And if he can beat Ari right now, he might be in contention to get first in this whole tournament. Yeah, I mean, he still has this amazing spread that he's been able to keep, keep up. So we'll love to see how his next game goes with Ari. With every single game, money is being exchanged. If you are higher rated, you're putting more money on the table, and that means you have more to lose. So if you're within the same rating as Ari and Christopher are, they're both putting $2 on the table. So that means that whoever wins is going to take home all of the cash that is on the table right now. So if Ari can take first here, he might walk home with a couple extra bucks in his pocket than he had when he walked in. And these are two of my favorite opponents. Um, I love playing them. I don't often beat them, um, but I have beaten them. Um, but they are both so skilled, so polite, so calm over the board, um, just lovely people and great competitors. Uh, love playing both Christopher and Ari when I get the opportunity to. Yeah, and they've both been playing so well this tournament. I mean, we just saw Ari play a fantastic game last round. And Christopher, in all the games that we've seen of him, has been doing extremely well, too. So I think we're going to have some fireworks this round. And starting off, Ari's drawn the Z and a very nice six letter. He has Zanana. And that's going to take him right to the triple and score him a nice 40, 50 points just to start off the game. Yeah, that, no, no waiting there. That's a, that is a clear best play that Ari saw instantly. Mm -hmm. And if Christopher had the right tiles, those double A's right next to the double letter scores could come to bite Ari a little bit. But unfortunately, being stuck with the G and the U and no tiles worth more than three points, I think Christopher's not really going to be able to take perfect advantage of it. Now, what do you think about this? The top scoring play seems to be Glitz taking the Z to the double word score, but the problem is that it keeps E-A-U. Those are three vowels and not particularly lovely vowels at that. Yeah, I mean, I was looking at stuff like guilt or guile, like underlappings and not. I mean, I would also want to sort of get rid of like that underlap because, you know, Ari could really draw into something potentially dangerous. And then, like you said, with the vowel ratio with glitz, it's it's something to be concerned about. Yeah, so some top plays here would be like Tegula, which can underlap almost the entire length of Zanana and score, honestly, not as well as you'd hope, but it will take a lot of a lot of the danger out of that area. Oh, and welcome Ori Swift into the chat. Now I'm nervous. <laughs> Just make sure your quackle is running. That's all that really matters, Jeffrey. <laughs> um, I'll just look for his advice. So Latu is going to come down. Now, this is an interesting play. It keeps G-I-E on his rack, and I don't think really addresses a lot of the threats of this position very well. What do you think about this play, Stefan? I'm, I'm getting quackle open so that I don't sound too much like an idiot, so give me a second. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I mean, just in this position, I think it's it's an, it's a good way to get rid of the U, and it deals with a Z, and it scores some points. But I think I would much rather have gotten rid of the G there with even just something like Teg U underneath Zanana, mm -hmm. I think would be a little bit better. You don't want the U hanging around too long, and that's... Obviously, exactly. Or even just something like a goal, or as Cherish was mentioning, guile would be a little bit nice. Um, now we're moving over to Ari, who has found himself in the exact same position that Christopher was last turn, which is having a lot of bingo tiles and yet not having a bingo or any particularly high scoring plays. His best play seems to be adding I-R-E onto the Z-A to make Zaire, which I think is the 
extinct unit of currency of the place of Zaire. Um, but it would leave him with not the best leave for bingoing of A-L-L-O. Maybe something just like Lilo up top would leave him with A-R-E and might be a little bit better, even though it scores half as much. What do you think you'd be looking for in this position, Cherish? I mean, I think, again, he's literally just about to play it, but I really think I would look for the point here. Yeah. I mean, even though he started off with Zanana, like, Chris has been you know, putting on a good fight, and I feel like he doesn't want to, I guess, lower his scoring. I think he just wants to keep scoring. And then if it gets too bad, he'll deal with it. You want the scoring to never stop, I think, in this point, too. I think 28, you do not want to pass that up to try to – to get too cute with uh, with cleaning up your rack. This seems like a pretty logical play to me. Um, I can deal with that double L on the next turn. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, when you're up seven or 50 points already on the second turn, like you really don't need to worry about a slightly inopportune rack. Um, and moving over to Christopher, he has almost a bing couple bingos set up, but none of them play. So he's going with Ergo, which makes a lot of sense. It cleans up a lot of his rack. Um, and, he, and he holds the T for Ergo. Which is the only hook, yeah. Which is the only hook, Cherish. That's yeah, absolutely right. It, it does still seem a little risky to me to open up that hook so early on when you have no idea what your opponent has in his rack. And your opponent is about to whack you with an X-bomb. So that's not going to be happy making for Chris. What do you, so do you think, do you think that play has justifiable risk? I mean, it, it gives, it has a very big payoff if his opponent doesn't have the T, but I think at this point in the game, when you're down 50, it's not, I mean, like it's only the beginning of the game. It's not worth it to make those risks yet. Yeah. He's going to regret this in a second. And I don't see much in the way of a comeback with OXO, assuming that OX is the play from Ari. Well, I don't, I don't see an X on Ari's rack. Oh, is that a Y? I'm sorry. It's covered up on y. my screen. It's covered up on my screen. Well, Y's not bad either. I mean, no, alloy, he has alloy, alloy, alloy looks the o. like alloy looks like it might be nice as well. Yeah, and it scores really well here. Uh, it's going to score him 30 points and help deal with what I, I mean, Ari must know at this point that Christopher just set up Ergo for Ergot. And here comes Alloy. So Ooh, now Christopher, he can no longer, yeah, he can't take advantage of the T-hook he set up. Um, he really has nothing good going on down there. No. And he's going to avoid the spot entirely. I feel, yeah, I think you just have to hope... That's an interesting play to me. It seems like a simply worse version of playing it underneath NU. It seems Christopher has been playing this game extremely riskily so far. And maybe that's his strategy to get underneath uh, Ari. Maybe Ari isn't used to this style of open, super risky game. Or but it may just be an I'm understanding not that Ari is an explosive player with tremendous word knowledge and I'm down by, you know, a bingo already. Um, and I need to do something to make sure I've got opportunities here. I'm keeping that T spot open under Ergo uh, to bingo potentially. And I'm now opening up a new lane if I can draw an S or play an 8 through the I or maybe even just score some, get some something that's synergistic to play with the Y with my O. Mm -hmm. And actually, Ari has a bingo here. Yes, it's been spotted in chat, the nine letter word through ER. He has Overseer. Overseer, oh my God. Fantastic, fantastic play. Um, I mean, the first thing that I looked at with this rack was I saw the over and I thought, oh, if there's an E, he has Overseas. Um, but that's fantastic find. I thought the exact same think... thing, Jeffrey. Yep. Um, but the ER did not see that initially. That's definitely the kind of play where it behooves you to take an extra minute. And of course, here and he goes. finds it. He finds it instantly. Less than a minute. 
Um, and that's a fantastic play. It's far better than his very next best play of Servo. Um, and it means that three turns in, Christopher is down almost 100 points. And now, honestly, Christopher has to be grateful for those risky spots he's opened up because he's going to need to use them in order to come back in this game. Now, luckily, he has his own bingo here. He's going to have Neutron right above Overseer's. Um, I'll turn that in around. It's not going Come to... on. <laughs> um, it's not going to put him quite back into the running quite yet. Um, he has both Neutron and Neutrino. Do you think that Neutrino might just be better just to not open up the triple to an S? I mean, it also played on top of AG slotting the N in the seventh position on the triple column. So that was another yes, that's option. that's true. Less lower scoring, but if you're talking about And I think simply too risky. Too risky, but you also create the S hook on top of Nag. Um, so if you're looking to make this, to sort of blow this game wide open, that's certainly one way to do it. Instead of risk, instead of depending on drawing an S or one of the blanks. Um, two S's out, mm -hmm. both blanks on scene. So you're hoping to reach into that bag now and get something that's going to help you. People are pointing out that Ari, if he only had an I, would have the bingo of Minority, minority. which is a fantastic bingo. Um, which was just But instead, his bingo. top play will only score a measly 43 points for something like Mo Moni or Mighty or Myri. Yep. Moni being a play that I've used to draw challenges out of countless of people who thought I typoed money. <laughs> I have a list of words that look like I accidentally typoed other words, and I used to study this list so that I could play them in game just to really mess people up. That Back is like, in the that, youth scene, I... Jeffrey, that's I like the most school G. Scrabble thing I've ever heard, like having a list of words that it's maybe so are... school Scrabble. My favorite is, I think I've drawn about six or seven challenges back when I was in middle school in Scrabble playing G-A-O-L, as in the British word for jail, because everyone thinks I meant to play goal. And Myri is going to come down, which is a great play. Um, and that's going to score him 43 points, and he's still up nearly 100 points despite only having played one extra bingo. Now, this looks like the type of rack for Christopher that there could be a bingo in, but unfortunately, none of them seem like they're going to be able to come down. He has the really nice play of what I like to call like a power five of playing mm -hmm. the K on the triple letter score down to the double word score, and that will score him a nice 40 points with need, or need if you want to pronounce it phonetically, unphonetically. Please don't pronounce it unphonetically, just... Pro phonetically, <laughs> just pronounce it the way it's pronounced. Need, like to knead bread, leaving C H I. It's interesting that that might not even be the top play because he has other. I mean, interestingly, so since he's down, he really wants to open the board right now. So playing something like Kid on top of Zenana might be worth it so that he has that S or O hook on top of K A for the future. And if you want to keep things the way they are, neutral, you can play K H I under alloy on the left corner mm -hmm. the southwest triple for what 37 or something but i think he's going to just take the points yeah here very nice score and try to stay within shouting distance this puts him down about 50 points but mm -hmm. ari has drawn the first blank and he has some really nice plays to come down. I mean, he has H to the end to reach the top triple, but what I think is the most dangerous is he has Atonius hooking onto Ergot finally, um, making a really dangerous underlap. Um, and that's going to score him 85 points underneath on the bottom triple. And he's going to find it instantly because, of course, instantly. he does. Yes. That's a beautiful um, play. And the problem for Christopher here is he really hasn't done much wrong so far. 
perhaps opening up all these spots really did come back to bite him because he hasn't taken advantage of any of the positions he's opened up. Um, the Goji set up a triple that Ari took advantage of for 43 points, and then Ergo set up a bingo, which Ari now took advantage of for 85. These setup plays really haven't been working for Christopher because he hasn't been in the position to take advantage of the same spots. And they've been... Um, he does... Go ahead, Jeffrey. Sorry, you're, you go. No, no, go ahead. He does play his top play here of Hyde for 50 points, which will put him back within fighting distance of the game, but it's not quite, it's not quite there yet. Christopher's going to have to either draw into a bingo in the top top half of the board. Not a single tile played in the top half of the board yet. Insane. Which is kind of crazy. I'd love to see them continue that just for our entertainment. <laughs> but I have a feeling Christopher's going to yeah, want to open something up to try to activate the upper half of the board and create some bingo lanes. I wonder how far in a game you can go without ever going up. I remember a game a couple of years ago from a, a tournament in I think it was in it was a, it was in um, in Africa and the players played vertically like the entire game it was all vertical plays every play that sounds like quite the spectacle that's pretty cool it was a pretty cool board to look at um, moving over to Ari though. He really doesn't have the best tiles to take advantage of this position. The top plays do score decently well, and they all revolve around that triple letter score between Goji and Neutron. The P there can score a lot of points when you play cross because the J and the T work well to make something like Jet or Jot. So if he plays something like PE there, he'll make Opus and Jet and score 32 points, which is a really nice reward for finding a cute little overlap play like that. That being said, looking between the O and the U and the S is not something that most players would do, but Ari is not most players. That's why the colored squares, as I tell my school Scrabble kids, are the things to look for because they visually leap out at the board. And oh my god, he found it. Wow. I, I was going to say, he has the absolutely insane play of microbe or microbus down there and he spots it instantly without a second doubt a an eight letter play through three disconnected letters i mean th we're watching the top level of scrabble right here and there's no it's no wonder that these players are currently fighting for position number one that's pretty cool play cherish that's that's the kind of thing where when ari lays down the pe your brain has to instantly recognize the hook, the C hook. Um, you're not expecting it. So you've got to have that instant awareness that it's possible. Um, and, you know, the players like these are looking at that, right, Cherish? And they're going, well, PE, I know, maybe M-I-R-R, P-E-R is good. P-E-C is good. Let's see what is possible through there. So that is a, a, an excellent feat of of, of uh, spatial awareness and analysis. Definitely. And honestly, I think what probably happened there is uh, Chris realized that Microbe was his best play before Ari even made his turn. And then sure. when PE came down, Christopher looked at it and thought, wow, nothing has changed. All I'm doing is getting a couple <laughs> extra points. And it's going to put him in a really nice position because he drew that final blank for playing off four tiles in a closed board. And he's going to have a couple different bingos to come down next it's turn. Stumpily good? I think even... I think that's good, yeah. Um, Stumpily, yeah. Good, scoring yeah. a lot of points. Now, what are you looking for from Ari's position? In a closed board, when you're up, what do you want to do, Cherish? What do you think? I mean, I'm definitely not trying to give uh, my opponent spots to play. Uh, or I can tell he's down like a bingo-ish. And I guess OF is really, I mean, it's a good play because, well, to some extent, it scores a bit. 
he has the T, he has like Sun, he has Ton, and if he's able to bingo and secure his lead, then he, you know, it's almost game over. But And I think that's probably what he's thinking, Cherish. I think he's figuring that I've got the E also for Eon. Um, this puts me up 100 plus. Wow. And he found this it. This is going to bring Christopher back into the game. 101 points for Stumpley in a closed board. He's He came back after being down over 100 points for like three turns in a row. He's found the best play two turns in a row and is back in. And this is why these players are the top players, because they don't give up when they're down. They keep going. Yeah, 100-point deficit feels like a lot, but two blanks out, board's not entirely closed there are lanes to bingo and what do i want to do when i'm down 100 i want to bingo and christopher Definitely. found that quickly mm -hmm. he wasted no time spotting the blank t the m on the double 100 plus awesome now stumpily is a great play and it scores well for chris but one thing it doesn't really do is open the board up that much there's one spot on this word that really can be taken advantage of, and that's the S. You can play a lot of bingos from the S to the triple, and that could really change this game. But the top play by the computer is to just play VOG and completely shut down that area. Unless you're going to end the bingo in an M or a P, suddenly the entirety of Stumbly is off limits once again, and now your only hope for bingoing or getting more than a couple points would be to use the ON that was set up by Ari. And at this point, though, Cherish, Christopher doesn't need to bingo anymore. It's a virtually tied game. Exactly. And I think they're on hold right now. Ari is on holding Christopher's play. So people are talking in chat. I don't think we actually know whether the blank is a T or an L. Ooh. Oh. If it's an L, it Ooh. will be a phony. And people point out in, in chat, Ori does, that Cilium is the only bingo in Slumpily. And it is a common bingo, or it's common phony to play slumpily instead of cilium. However, if it is a T, then this is in fact a play. And additionally, if this is a T and Ari challenges, this is going to put Christopher in a really strong position to just take over this game. He's going to get to take advantage of that T. He's going to get to take advantage of the ON, and they're going to move forwards really well. But it looks like Ari is letting Chris draw his tiles. Can we get confirmation on whether it's a T or an L? I'm not sure we super know. And yes, Vogs comes down completely shutting down the top of the board. Um, and oh, I am looking at Chris's rack right now. If he draws the O to make that X worth so many points. Chris is on a really high scoring rack with a Q, X, F, C, and H. Um, and the board is honestly a little bit made for it right now. That Q is going to come down for 30 points really easily. I feel like Christopher in this case is probably like really excited right now. I mean, he's narrowed the spread. He has these really high scoring letters. If he just plays them off one by one, 30 plus points, I think he sees a way out of you know the slump he was in. Of course, unbeknownst to him, Ari has like tidiest, but yes, tidiest to the O in in on and of tidiest and ditties both will come down, and it still might not be over because it opens up a lot of the board, and Christopher has the tiles to take advantage. Oh, he plays QI in the bottom left. I didn't even spot that. It's probably and saving. that's very smart. Yeah. Yeah, he's saving the spot for the X. Mm -hmm. That's really, that's great strategic thinking. Your mind goes right to that colored square again for QI. But this is a way to maximize the power tiles here. We got confirmation that the blank is in fact a T. Okay, so that challenge would have meant the end of Ari's... Um, at least it would set him back a lot. But Tidius is going to come down. Um, Tidius could come down in two places. It could either hook onto 
the top to make ton, or it can go into the left to make uh, oft. Or ditties is what we're actually going to end up seeing. It seems like the right placement. I think the <laughs> oft with the ed on the wow. And Ari and Chris really are terrible. both laughing. <laughs> Both of the players are laughing because of how insane these last set of plays have been, just <laughs> scoring after scoring after scoring after having such a closed board. And Christopher was probably not thinking, oh, I'm gonna be in a strong position heading into the into the into the pre end game. Exactly. And Stumpley is definitely one of those. That's a that's a memorable play. He's gonna he's gonna like mm -hmm. that. But what do now, you do now? You now you're once again, that... he's once again now down 50 points. You hang on to the X he and has strong tiles. Yeah. I mean, what tiles do we even have left at this point? It's not, it's not much. There is no O's left in the bag. No, no so O's left. Yeah, I just saw that. Um, in fact, there haven't been O's for a while, so it's not like he's had the opportunity to wait there. So it makes his play of QI worth a little bit less, less, because at that point, when you know that you won't be able to take advantage of of the triple letter score in two directions, it might be far more worth it to play your Q there and then use your X on the bottom left, since on it'll score line. a lot more points with the X going two ways. That's a great observation, Jeffrey, and I did not see that the o's were all gone yeah me neither um and one thing i also want to point out christopher has been absolutely blitzing out this game he spent 10 minutes to ari's nearly 20 minutes at this point um, which means he has a lot of time to consider this end game really carefully because we are there despite it seeming like this game has gone by really fast we are in the end game with only one tile left in the bag so Christopher not only needs to worry about making up that deficit, he also needs to worry about simply getting his tiles out in time, because at this point, he might get stuck with either the F or the C or the H, or even the X, which would be a game ender for him. And on the other side, Ari's got six consonants. So there will be an issue of trying to play them off in a useful way. There's certainly spots to dump some consonants. And he does not need to score very much at this point unless Chris can find Christopher can find a way to make up a lot of ground. Yeah, so the top plays for Chris at this point are something like Axe or Uh or Factum. Mm -hmm. And each of these score nearly 30 points. And the problem is that at this point, he's down 50. So his hope is to be able, like, if he can find an out in two or three right now that will keep Ari with a B or a W on his rack, it might be winnable, especially because the board is not very friendly to the Ws and Bs that Ari has. From Ari's position right now, where do you think you're looking? What do you think are your options? Go ahead, Cherish. I think he's looking, I mean, he's looking at the vowels. Like, he's looking at the best place to play as many consonants as possible score decently and try not to get stuck with the w's and the b's like you talked about i guess another yeah. question is whether it's in chris's interest to try to play off a lot of tiles here and or not very many or not very many if he could score and play off a bunch and try to stick ari with some of that by going out in more quickly it doesn't seem likely i mean he has the play of factum which leaves him with jess hx which seems like a really strong play but he doesn't have many places to play that at hx afterwards it'll take him at least two turns and not enough points i think is the other issue there because exactly. Ari will score a little bit yeah because he would underlap yeah um, the alternative would be to play Factum second and try to play the other tiles now, but it doesn't seem like he has a nice spot to play like Hex. I think he's he might be he might be dismissing Axe just because of the hook it creates on top of AT for a comeback. Brew. Yeah, it allows 
noob brew, both of those would come down for yeah. a lot. In fact, I think the best position here is just to play the UH and deal with some of those letters. Because no matter what Ari is doing, he's going to have to open up the board. Is there any merit to dropping the X for 25? I doubt it. And I haven't seen him look it's at interesting. Picking up the X. It's interesting that we've gotten to this point with both players at over 400 points, with both of the Ws, the F, the C, the B, the H, and the X still in the bag. And the Q, like... The beginning of this game was simply filled with one pointers and now all of these high scoring tiles are coming out in the end really mucking things up christopher would have liked to have had the cue on the previous turn and i wonder if chris is somewhat regretting that qi play yeah. because i think if he had a really nice 40 point um ax play right now he'd be in a really good position to win this. A QUA if he had plucked the Q on top of Diddy's. <clears throat> would have been nice for him. Now here's something incredible. The only tile left in the bag is an A. And what that means is that if Christopher draws the A and keeps the A, X, T, and C, he's going to have a taxic through the I and Diddy's for 40 points. Whoa. So if Chris plays something like UH and Ari plays something like Owned, making Dup for 30 something points, A Taxic will come down for 40 points and put Christopher back almost in the lead. But no. then the problem is that Ari will be able to play, Ari will be able to play through A Taxic and go out. I'm not looking That's at looking chat like right now. What, what, are, what are people saying in chat about the sequence here? Yeah, people are talking about the idea of just playing XI here. And it's interesting. I mean, like the big plays that Christopher has right now are something like Chufa or Taxim. Like, is it worth it to consider playing like TIX right now in order to play Chufa next turn somewhere? Oh, but he draws an A is the problem. Right. In fact, this position perfectly highlights the importance of leaving a tile in the bag. Because Christopher probably assumes that Ari has a much better rack than he does. He doesn't know that Ari only has a single vowel. Um, and that means that the the board seems way more hostile to him than it would otherwise appear. I think Christopher's main concern is preventing Ari from having a big scoring comeback to whatever he does. He needs to minimize Ari's ability to score right now, knowing that at best he has the A and the E, but at worst only has one vowel. And I think his hope and his thinking has to be all right, I gotta, I gotta assume that Ari's only got one vowel. What can I do to make it hard for him? Exactly. And she plays Chum. Now that's extremely interesting. So he has done this math. He is looking at the position and he thinks that this is his only possibility. And what's fascinating about this play is it doesn't, it completely blocks any use of that I spot. Do, do we think that there's any world in which this wins for him? This is where my head explodes and I don't have the ability <laughs> to analyze the end game position. So what is chat saying and what's Quackle saying? Um, we're pointing out some other possibilities like ouch which is oh that's interesting so the problem with this play right now is that it just opened up who w-h-e-w for 26 points Ooh. however if instead of playing chum he played ouch um it wouldn't give ari that possibility at all Ooh, ew 
Ooh. Oh, wow. And people are pointing out some other options as well. If if instead Christopher had played A or Chap right there, it would have threatened the X-Bomb in a way that Ari can't block it. Oh. Unless he sacrifices a lot of points. One is going to come down for 27 points, and I think that might just seal it because it's too many points for Christopher to come back from. Um, Ari would have just had to block the X-Bomb, of course, with, I think, A, B. Just the B. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, the D also. No, D, I, no. A, B was it. Setting Maybe up. he could have even Axe played B, E, here. L. That's a good setup by Christopher. He's got... Trying to set up facts. Smart, I would probably just drop the B on top of the I, though, or just play bat or Watt. Even yeah, better. it simply doesn't work. It doesn't work. I mean, I'm I'm so curious to see what Quackle has to say about this game afterwards, what the championship player, um, how it will analyze this position, because I think there were so many lines that both of these players could have gone down, and I'm really curious to see if Christopher ever had... Any hopes in this endgame? Oh, he set up uh, facts underneath the ticks. Oh, he did. Two spots Wait, for his out. He beautiful. set up a really clever play. This is beautiful. That's 42. Um, is it enough? He can't possibly block these plays. No, unfortunately, it looks like he loses by seven at the end of this. After wow, that? that's a brilliant play, though. I really wonder how far away Chris saw this position. That's some fantastic Backs high level down. thinking. Beautiful. That's a lovely play, setting up two points. spots, knowing your opponent won't be able to capitalize on either of them very well, and then going out with a 42-point fax. Gorgeous. And in fact, there was absolutely nothing Ari could have done there to block fax underneath. Nope. Um, what a beautiful endgame. That was simply gorgeous to watch.